what will be your key message uh, here today? that we should learn what got us the digital and computer revolution. It was both the public and the private, but the public was m very ambitious, it was mission-oriented, it was trying to solve problems, and it came in before the private sector. And by being strategic and interesting and dynamic, it crowded in, it kind of got the private sector excited to invest. And today, unfortunately, after the crisis, we are living through an era where we pretend that, at best, the public sector can just facilitate, enable, administer, and regulate. Maybe not in Norway, though. Okay. <laughs> So what do you know about Norway? And so, well, many things, including that you have a big, fat sovereign wealth fund mm -hmm. <laughs> that could be, could be more catalytical. It's currently mainly invested in other parts of the financial industry, but I think it's very interesting when you do have big public uh, financial instruments, how they can, in fact, uh, upset and disrupt the status quo versus just benefiting from the existing way of doing things. Mm. And I think it's interesting because you have, um, I think, a population that wants to go green, but you also have, you know, benefits from the incumbency of staying with business as usual. So mm. there's a bit of a tension. Anything we should be proud of? Lots of things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Besides the nature on the plane yeah. that I saw coming here. No, I, th I think you do have an active public sector. I just think that we need to break out of the dichotomy of public versus private. It's all about new types of partnerships. And I think you do have you know, state-owned enterprises like Innova, which is very interesting. You have public financial institutions like the Sovereign Wealth Fund. And I think the real question is what are the dynamic new types of partnerships with the private sector that can be fostered so that the public bit is just as crazy and foolish and interesting as the private sector. And that's much more difficult because you continue in many countries to have this idea that public is a bit boring and bureaucratic and maybe we just need to make it smaller. In your opinion, what should we do to succeed with, uh, with the climate communication? Uh, why is this so difficult? So I think what would really help is that everything becomes green, so that all the problems that we have, like future of mobility, as well as clean growth, how we think about you know, the buildings that we create in cities, if that can be both the supply side and the demand side of a green transformation. So for example, in Germany, it's quite interesting how they have the Energiewende policy, mm -hmm. which has also forced steel, the steel industry, to lower its material content. I think that's very interesting, societies that are able to transform their existing manufacturing so it's not just about renewable energy, but transforming also old industries and rewarding those that are willing. I often say don't pick the winners, pick the willing. There's not many organizations that are willing to transform and those that are need help. And so all the public instruments like procurement policy, prize schemes, grants, loans should be helping the few organizations across the public and private that are willing to engage in a green transformation.